Hello there again. I'm Longbox55. Of course, as you know, I'm LB to you guys on the What Are You, Stacey Davids, What Are You Working On site. And uh, we're going to do part two on the brake line flaring series. I'm going to cover doing brake line flaring using a professional grade hydraulic uh, flaring tool. And uh, I also had a request from uh, one of my friends on the Stove Bolt page as to a little more detail on how the flaring is actually done. Uh, he had a little trouble understanding how the metal is actually lapped over itself. So I'll start by showing the tool itself and then we'll get into doing a flare and the procedures. Okay, so here we have the tool itself. Uh, you'll notice that I have covered the name of the company with uh, some tape. Uh, this is out of respect for Stacy David's uh, tool sponsor because this is not the same brand tool that they sponsor on the show. Uh, they do carry this virtually identical tool. Uh, they're pretty much all made by the same company. So the price will vary depending on tool company to tool company from uh, about three hundred and fifty to six hundred dollars depending on who you get it from now so got it opened up here and you can see there's a lot of bits and pieces uh, this tool consists of your hydraulic ram you have your double flaring adapters your ISO adapters plus push connect adapters and the GM fuel line adapters they also make a kit for doing the 37 degree um, fl single flare for stainless steel line. Don't run into that too much anymore in uh, passenger car use because uh, they've changed alloy on the stainless steel and it will do a regular double flare now. Um, so you've all seen the previous video where I showed how to prepare the end of your line. Again, good cutter with a reamer built on it, spend a little extra money, get you a good one, get an American one if you can. Same goes for your file. Nice fine file, something for metal use. Again, buy American if you can. Um, and it shouldn't really be a problem because a lot of tools are still made in the United States. So, uh, let's get started with the process. You gotta open up the screw on the side and you pick your appropriate size die stock they're all marked on the side what size and what flare they do so and you'll notice in comparison to the previous tool I used how much more space there is on here for it to clamp, clamp the line that really makes it uh, be able to do a better flare with less chance of the line slipping and you don't have to tighten the line up so tight in it to make the flare so just make sure we get it opened up enough where we can slide the line in easily now with this tool instead of having the guide on the adapter pin this one you just simply line it up flush with the top of the die itself and then you just simply clamp it into place so again it is important that you get it positioned properly because if it's positioned wrong you make too big of a flare and it won't fit too low it's too small of a flare and it'll leak so we get it clamped in there then you pick your appropriate size adapter and this is basically I'll show you with the larger one this does the same job as the piece that was in the manual kit that I showed you earlier. Um, it's just basically a little bit different piece. So it just simply goes in and you thread it up till your pin starts. Close the valve and squeeze the lever. And the nice thing with this being hydraulic pressure is it does not take near as much uh, input to do this because you're using hydraulic pressure. 
So you pump it in until it stops. It does sound a little dirty, doesn't it? So then you release it. Now I'm going to actually take this apart and show you what your first step should look like. You would not normally do this when you're making a flare because you will shift the position. And I dropped the piece. Okay, so here's your first step. You can see how the metal has swelled out and it started to fold it in on top of itself. And I'll put it back in the die so you can see how that goes. So this is your first operation. This is called the upset operation. Now the second step would be pushing the forcing cone in through the top and that pushes this part of it here down into itself. As you can see this is actually a 45 degree angle right here already. That's why they actually call it a double flare. You're not actually flaring the line twice. Uh, the actual correct term is actually an inverted double lap flare. And the idea is on the end of the flare you have double thickness of the metal which allows for a strong leak proof seal. Um, a lot of people get that wrong. So, put the cone in, close the valve, and you gotta make sure you get it lined up straight because otherwise it will go in crooked and you don't want that. So we're lined in straight and then you just basically go in until it stops. You don't need to get carried away with crushing it real tight. In fact actually you want it to have a little bit of spring in it because when you tighten it up that will help it compress better and you'll get a better seal. Okay so there you go that's all there is to it. Um, you know, again, as I said in my previous video, line prep is very important. Uh, where are I pan the camera back up here? Okay, I don't want to sound like I'm coming off uh, that I'm ripping anybody or their procedures for doing a job. But I have watched a couple of the other brake line flaring videos on, uh, on YouTube. I didn't realize the subject was really going to be that popular, but apparently it is. Uh, I did see one, the first one that really came up when I went on there was a guy, I'm not going to say the guy's name, but I was not very impressed with his workmanship. Uh, you know, he, he was using the cheap Chinese tool to cut his line. He didn't ream it, he didn't file it, and really his final product while a serviceable flare was just not really a professional looking job um, and like I said I've watched a few of his other videos and well I'm not sure where they found this guy but you know he's uh, not really very good or at least he doesn't come off very good to me maybe I'm viewing it differently um, I am a certified master mechanic so I'm maybe a little bit more sensitive to that kind of thing. I don't like people that make us look bad. So um, I apologize for my rant. Um, you know, I just want you guys out there to know that make sure you get the right information. Um, you know, I mean, not necessarily from myself. Uh, there, I saw several other videos that were giving excellent advice. So. You know, don't be afraid to ask around. And, uh, you know, if you're into rebuilding the cars, you know, check around some of the forums. Uh, there seems to be a, one out there for every kind of vehicle out there. Uh, if it's just general cars, I personally would suggest checking out what are you working on. Stacy David, uh, pretty much anything with an engine on it. Uh, he even built one with a bar stool with a small block Chevy on it. So... You know, come by and see us on there. Uh, if you're into old Chevrolet trucks, uh, pre-72, come see me over there on Stobolt page. Uh, lots of good information to be found there. Uh, might also check out Garage Insider. That's uh, Lou Santiago's site. So, um, 
like I said, lots of good guys out there, lots of good advice. So again, I'm LB, and I'll see you on the next one.